are these people? We're going to talk about some celebrities, everyone's favorite topic and subject, but I think you'll enjoy this one. Um, so the always lovely Caitlin Johnstone, uh, that Consortium News loves to share now, um, she writes, the silence of the artists. Celebrities are reluctant to criticize the U.S. centralized empire because they benefit from it directly. So we're going to talk about some folks. I should have grabbed that. You have it in our, um, I think in our chat up here that I can also grab. Um, which I will do. Cool. That'll be ready for when I can use that. All right. So Caitlin writes, for the last eight months, people have been expressing frustration and confusion about the reluctance of celebrities to use their immense platform to speak out against the U.S. backslaughter in Gaza. But it's not really a mystery why this happened. Celebrities are reluctant to criticize the U.S. centralized empire because they benefit from it directly. It's actually a very important aspect of imperial narrative control. All of our society's largest and most influential voices are intimately dependent on the political status quo upon which the empire is built. Fame and fortune come as a result of being elevated by the wealthy owners of media production platforms like film studios, record labels, TV, and news media, and those extremely wealthy people have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo upon which their wealth is premised. So... Caitlin put this in here, which I think is an important thing to discuss, right? So this is join in on the Digitine by participating in Blockout 2024 by blocking celebrity influencers on all social media accounts. We do this so they don't earn ad revenue. So you've been seeing things about this, Colin? I, I do believe. You know, hopefully you've, you've blocked some celebrities yourself. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yes, I have. Okay. Well, let's let this guy explain Block stuff. Block celebrities on social media so they don't earn ad revenue from you. TikTok users are calling for a mass block on celebrities who aren't using their platforms to speak up about social issues, mainly Israel's months-long war on Palestine's Gaza. Block them until they support Palestine. We control celebrities' money. Their currency is our attention and data. Our first assignment, meaning the first celebrity that we're going to mass block until they speak up in support of Palestine, is Kim Kardashian. What? Some TikTokers are sharing their Free list everybody. Of she in an effort to hold them accountable for their silence and push them to use their platforms to speak up about the atrocities happening in Gaza. So I wanted to share my block list and give you my reasoning for blocking these celebrities and influencers. We have Justin Bieber. I will never forget that he accidentally posted a picture of Gaza and said standing with Israel. Many have also called out celebrities for attending the high profile fashion events, the Met Gala, while Israel ramped up its bombardment of Palestinians trapped in Gaza's Rafah. This is genuinely so dystopian. These people are living on a different plane of reality than the rest of us. They aren't even affected by the same political and economic issues that matter to us because rich people will always have the means to circumvent them. So, any questions? Um, no. One of the, one of the, we've talked. I talked. Go ahead. I talked about this with you privately, but. Yeah. It's very interesting now, all of a sudden, I think within the last two weeks, we've seen an onslaught of celebrities now basically being like, free Palestine! Like, um, like for example, I think last week, those of you who know who of the Try Guys... You know oh, know that? Another donation from Baser Maternal Rage for $5. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. It says, um, Big Poor Unite. Yeah. I agree. Um, um, yeah, but, um, but yeah, anyway, I was saying that, um, like the Try Guys had a fundraiser for Palestine that Hassan Piker, I believe, happened to oh, attend. Sure, you know, this was in within the last week or two. So now, all of a sudden, I'm seeing a lot of these not even like these major celebrities, but like I would say these mid celebrities, especially within the YouTube sphere, are now all of a sudden now on board. Um, of actually now being a little more verbal in, in saying, giving their support to Palestine when people have been screaming at them for months prior to say something and they wouldn't. So, mm -hmm. but I think that TikTok basically kind of calls it out is that people are now blocking them. And as they say, 
we don't give them the attention. We don't give them money. This is, and I have to stop doing this. Like, you see all those Zionists on Twitter X that are basically tweeting to get you all riled up, myself included, yeah. which I, I'm guilty of. Yep. They're doing that to get money. Like, the more attention that they get, the more revenue they get. Yeah. So, the more impressions their stuff it's gets. In your right. So it is in your best interest if you see any of that bullshit, basically just to block it, just so you're not giving them the attention of, and more importantly, uh, ad revenue. So, mm. you know, that just goes for basically for any, like, uh, any of these quote-unquote celebrities or, you know, micro-celebrities, especially seeing them online. Um, but that's why they tweet the way that they do to rile you up so that you would respond. So, yeah. um... But yeah, like, so it's just kind of funny that now all of a sudden, like, it's okay when for the last few months they've been silent or they've been doing, like, silent protests, like, with the pins that we saw at the Grammys or, like, yeah. maybe some fashion thing, or, or you know, like. Just stuff like, stuff like this, oh, you know, oh, this fucking shit That's... where it's like, we're going to dip our toes in the water and see if we can get away with shit but here's the fucking terrible dj khaled um who is palestinian that's right palestinian my mother is from ramallah my father's from Mizra Sharkia. big up jerusalem straight from palestine i requested my favorite uh meal called maklube all right check it out check it out check it out oh. Ah, oh, Maklube. This is the best ever. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Now, Straight from Palestine. Imagine you're in Palestine now, Colin. You're, I don't know, in the middle of Ramallah. Yeah. You've right. had to risk life and limb to get a bag of flour. And... This fat fuck, don't worry, I'm a fat fuck, I can say that shit, <laughs> is fucking out here posting a fucking, I don't know, two kilos worth of fucking rice. Like, what are you doing, homie? Fucking. Congratulations, you played yourself. I mean, right. you really did. You really did. Anyway, I don't want to give that guy more airtime than he deserves, so. Um. But, yeah, just craziness. So, Caitlin continues, those who are threatening to the status quo are therefore not elevated to celebrity status, and the ones who get rich and famous either A, understand this acutely, or B, are too shallow and vapid to have any interest in rocking the imperial boat. Nobody becomes a superstar all on their own. It requires an extensively collaborative relationship with many individuals, and many of the most important of these are in positions of great wealth and power that have no desire to see socialism or anti-imperialism threaten their kingdoms by gaining a foothold in the political realities of their nation. This creates an impressively thorough gatekeeping system which filters out any clear-eyed rebels who might otherwise shine their way to the top. Of course, the filtration system isn't perfect. Sometimes someone sneaks through or more likely is waved through and then has a political awakening after achieving stardom. Kind of like this guy, right? Roger Waters, Pink mm -hmm. Floyd fame. We the people are with you. We must resist the genocide or the existential battle for the human soul will be lost. seen all the pictures coming out of Rafa this morning. One thing is clear, when this is all over, Israel is going to have to apologize, not just to the Palestinians, but to the whole of the rest of the world. So we're very sorry. We got it all completely wrong. And we are now leaving. Okay, we go back to Eastern Europe or the United States or wherever we came from leave these people, the Palestinian people, the people whose land this is, 
to, if they can, rebuild and live in peace, which is what they deserve. In a state, whatever it's called, hopefully Palestine, that will have equal rights for all its citizens, equal religious, political, civil, and human rights from the river, Jordan, to the sea. Goodbye, Israel. It's over. Oh, Just bye -bye, to be Israel. clear, I don't wish to be misunderstood. I'm not suggesting the continuation of war or another war. I'm not suggesting that at all. What I'm suggesting is, this is what my mother would tell you. <laughs> Very wise woman, my mother. My mother would tell you that the time has come for you, Israelis, Israel, the state. The time has come for you to do the right thing. You are a failed state. It's over. So, you know, Roger Waters, killing it as always. Um, mm -hmm. Like, your audio mix could be a little better, bro. Turn that music down a touch. Just a touch. It'll be fine. Um, so, Caitlin continues, For every Susan Sarandon or Roger Waters, there are hundreds of enthusiastic celebrity supporters of the status quo and a thousand others who just stay silent on all matters of real importance. Just making someone a multimillionaire and giving them a cushy lifestyle is enough to make them loyal to the political status quo of the land mere fact that the empire is capitalist and allows the wealthy to live like God ensures that most people who ascend to stardom will be heavily biased in favor of the system which allows for that lifestyle, and everything they say will publicly reflect this. This gives the empire a massive propaganda bullhorn which creates an information landscape where all the biggest voices speak as through the system is working perfectly and the voices of all the ordinary people whose experience tells them otherwise are drowned out. When Macklemore rapped about how the music industry's quiet, complicit in their platform of silence about Gaza, he asked, what happened to the artist? What do you got to say? And this is the answer. What happened to the most influential artists is that they stand too much to gain from supporting the status quo politics of the empire and stand too much to lose by opposing it. And that's why the mainstream artists of today are so artless. How much depth and profundity can you express if you're compartmentalizing away from reality like that, how authentic and meaningful can your art be while you are duty-bound to help preserve the status quo of mind-controlled dystopia where everything is fraudulent and everything that draws human beings to art in the first place needs to be sacrificed to retain celebrity status. Truthfulness, sincerity, rebelliousness, sensuality, inspiration, aliveness, that wild connection with something mysterious and strangely sexy which crackles just below the surface of everything. All that needs to be flushed down the toilet to become a celebrity guardian of the information interests of a low-standing U.S. centralized empire will live like a king, but you'll also have to sacrifice everything inside you that makes life worth living. We are ruled by weird, phony freaks in Washington and Virginia who collaborate with weird, phony freaks at the top of the corporate world, and the rule is enforced by weird, phony freaks in New York and Los Angeles who use their celebrity status to help create artificial mainstream culture that is mindless, heartless, soulless, and completely uninterested in the emergence of a healthy world. That is why celebrities are silent on Gaza today. Anything to add, Care Bear? Um, I almost feel, in a way, Macklemore in his way, made Palestine cool to talk about. Mm -hmm. Because, again, I've noticed since um, 
his video, Heinz, Heinz, it's Heinz, Heinz Hall, that more celebrities are starting to be a little bit more open about talking about Palestine. Uh, there's the artist, musical artist, I think you showed me this, Keilani, mm -hmm. who had uh, Palestinian imagery in her song, I guess. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I mean, there was... New people have since come out. SZA, I think, did some stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, just... I mean, now, gra not, oh. now granted... Now, granted, and I don't want to knock celebrities who have been calling out, speaking out for Palestine for from the very beginning. We're not talking yeah. about them, but we're talking about now. And you, you we've read and we did an uh, article on Caitlin who mentions this, that, but she was referring to college students, though, that when something becomes, you don't want this to become a trend or cool, because yeah. then that you're done. This is what this is now. It's now cool or trendy to be pro Palestine. Um, you know, whereas, you know, this shouldn't, this really shouldn't be a trend in the way that, especially given that how social media works, it's that it can be cool for one second and then it's not the next. Right. Like the idea mm -hmm. of this has been perpetuated from really over the last hundred years plus in terms of neocolonialism, imperialism, and just um, straight up racism. You know, that's the kind of stuff that these celebrities are not going to necessarily talk about, but it's the idea or the illusion that, oh, that they care. They really don't. It's just the idea of, I care more about my money and I care more about my fame and I care more about people noticing me and watching me and if I lose that, that's going to affect my bottom line. So I better say the cool stuff that I know Gen X especially would be into to kind of keep my profile alive. That's really all this is. Yeah. So, but given that, you that, know, like even with DJ, DJ like in, Khaled, like what he yeah. did, that was just disgusting in yeah. all, every single way. You know, yep. so like that's the worst. That's the worst, the extreme worst that you can do. You know, just having a huge plate of food and supposedly eating that by yourself. I don't think he did, well, but yeah. But just the but the idea that you're doing that while your own people are literally dying of starvation. Yeah, you know, it's just really. It's, it seems very awful. like. Like why of all the things to do with that to have that to bring food involved with a starving country is just ridiculous. But yeah, I think you know as well as like the normal celebrity space. I think you know the political space definitely have its its case of celebrities, and I think a lot of the problems with that are you know ego related. And I brought Christopher Lee um to talk about some of that that i think i think will behoove some of the people in the space that are paying attention and you know to see what he is talking about so this is from the who are depressed, these people depressed Bergman. hey look at that oh. another ten dollar donation uh banger palestinian artist nemesis we'll look into that they leave that spotify link there for us i'll go check that out okay um so this is Christopher Lee. He says the most dangerous thing that a young actor or actress can do is to believe their own publicity. So... Ten years. And I'd worked in all sorts of places, all over Europe in different languages, singing, acting, sweeping the stage, working in rep, working in the theater. In other words, learning, something that few, sadly, few young actors and actresses are prepared to do these days. So many of them are stars before they even make their first film. And you know when you look at them on the screen that they are looking in a mirror. Absolutely in a mirror. And it's the uh, beginning of a lifelong romance. And their hand is out underneath the mirror, out of shot. Because that's what they want, rich. Mm. To be rich and famous immediately. Which is terribly sad and extremely dangerous. The most dangerous thing that a young actor or actress can do is to believe their own publicity. Mm. 
because shelf life 10 years, mm. if you're a star 20 or 22 or 3 or 4, if you haven't got it, mm. if you've got it, if you've got the right instincts, the right imagination, the right powers of invention, if you have something behind you, some sort of foundations of experience and versatility, that's fine, you will go on, you will last. But if you haven't, and the majority has not got these qualities, and you always play the same part vertically or basically or slight variations on it, and that's all you can do, you'll be through in 10 years or even five, when the public will eventually say, well, you know, they're always doing the same thing. Mm. And the moment that's, that happens, it's the beginning of the end. You start at the top of the ladder, there's only one way to go. So, I feel like people in the space should be listening to stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I've got one you. more video after this. Um, so, anything you want to finish this out with? About 10 years. I, I had a, um, another thought in relation to what I was saying earlier. Just in the same way that it's becoming cool to be, you know, pro-Palestine on the extreme end, it's also going to be cool to be pro-Israel as well. Because yeah. now granted, news, that would be like, you know, it, so. yeah, it will be used, I mean, definitely as a counterpoint, but, you know, for the people like the Zionists, in the world who have been very firm in that. And as I said, the, you know, they're becoming celebrity. Like, we've seen this on Twitter. Like, they're going on these shows to kind of talk about, because it's the idea, of, it's the illusion of the pro-con issue. So they're going to represent their view. You know, we saw what happened, you know, like, I know you guys were talking, like, in the space we're talking about um, the thing that Brian Joy Gray did. You know, like um, that went viral. You know, like I, to me, and and I know I watched do this, and I know Russell was at the event, and I think he talked to Bree. You know, after the event, but I mentioned this to you. I don't know why, for the life of me, like I've had my criticisms of Bree. You know, th that has been established. Like, we, you know, guys know this. She's blocked me on Twitter. But one thing I'll never say is that one thing I can definitely vouch for her for is her intelligence, you know? So for me, it's just kind of like, I don't understand why, and this kind of be, might be kind of considered for the clout or whatever, about why she would decide to... Now, granted, she may not know. I, I, I I'll give her some grace. She may not know exactly what she was going into because apparently that room was basically full. It was very pro-Zionist, um, including the people on the panel, especially like the moderator, quote unquote. Uh, I think it was his name is Constantine Kassin, um, mm -hmm. very pro-Zionist. So she was kind of up against a lot in that regard. That being said, I, I, you know, like Russell mentioned that there were, they asked several people who said no. They did not want to do it. And g God, I wonder why, you know, because you, we've seen these guys on Twitter, like, you know, there's no reasoning with them. They will lie, obfuscate, and make up any story to kind of fit the narrative to give, make themselves a victim. And so even for that, in Bree's case, it's just kind of like, you didn't necessarily need to do that. At least if you were going to do it in a more of a fair way, that would have been one thing. But you were up against pro-Zionist panel versus a pro-Zionist audience who basically were looking for you to, you know, not make you look good and to make you look frustrated and I think really to wear you down. And yeah. then even, like, past that on Twitter, like, people were smearing her to high heaven again. So yeah. it's just kind of like, 
So there's almost like in that sense too, there's almost like this culture right now that we're seeing on the pro-Israel side of stuff like this that is also working to their benefit too, which is very sick. But in the midst of all of like, kind of like the service level, pro-Palestine, pro-Israel type thing, no one's necessarily talking about the root of the issues here in terms of why do people feel the way that they currently do about Israel? Why is it that pro-Palestinian Palestinians are, do, feel the way that they do towards Israel and maybe by a larger case, the world? Like, those discussions are not necessarily being had, I think, in a safe no. and um, like coming from a place of learning and understanding way. It's just well, more or less, you're wrong. Worried about... Oh, no, you're wrong. And just pointing fingers at each other yeah. and slapping each other around and not necessarily getting to the heart of this assault um given well, us what's going on in gaza i think i think you're seeing that you know and you're one of the few to call out grassroots musicians quote unquote coming out and exploiting your emotions on things right and slipping in little little details that shouldn't be there but you know i think you're you're with that christopher lee segment it was the the deep understanding and the want for understanding and learning from these artists that are you know varied they're not just on one topic right it's not they're not just picking up a bandwagon uh, you know that's the things to look out for. so you know i appreciate them joining the movement if they're doing so now but like also you got a lot of more learning to do if this is what you're jumping on to at this point you know so but Having having said that, um, I brought this, so I played this for you not yeah, too you long ago. This. So, but I figured yeah. I'd I'd pull it for our audience. So, uh, Raphael says two things: APAC and Biden don't know. Once you've called out by black culture, it's over. The second is, uh, black culture is not for sale. So. Nah, this is, I kind of disagree for that. It, it can be, <laughs> for sure. Um, but this is L.A. Russell, D.C. So, you know, uh, Russell, if you're if you're watching, you're welcome to come on and talk about the subjects that you mentioned here. I'll let you speak. They say the bomb is getting worse by the day. I deeply empathize from my crib in a bay. I don't want to be another black box online. Fake fighting for their lives while well, I'm enjoying mine. I thought about it deeply and I think it's finally time. Free all my niggas and free Palestine. I question what words could really do for them. If I won't grab a gun and go and shoot for them. I see the protests and try to root for them. Hoping that this war is not a boot for them. Something to step into on they off day. Not just to wear on they sleep. Something to claim why niggas grieve. A freedom that we never may achieve. Look at my niggas that still in chain. Look at my niggas that still enslaved. Look at my niggas that's in the grave. All the roads revolution paid. The president invested in the war. They ran out of bombs, we gave them all. The ammo was slow, we gave them all. Not hard to guess what it's all for. Mercy is all we implore. Strolling my explore, I see bodies on the floor. Bomb the hospital, man, they even bombed them all. I'm just asking what it's all for. Pray for Palestine. And all my niggas in the Congo. And all my niggas been oppressed in the West. It's hard to keep faith not knowing what's next. Pray for Palestine and all my niggas down in Syria and all my niggas that's oppressed in the East. It's hard to keep going not knowing if you gon' eat. So shout out L.A. Russell GC, um, mm -hmm. bringing the bars. But yeah, that's that's all I had to bring for this story. So hopefully, you yeah. Um, Abby Dew in the chat said. 
That's why hip hop hardly ever breaks through the gatekeepers to the radio anymore. It was too powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Like back in the day, uh, hip hop meant something. Mm -hmm. uh, hip hop was telling the news essentially to to express the reality of the black experience you know for us to kind of understand what was going on but for people who were willing to listen to hear what was going on from our perspective because our perspectives weren't necessarily being told in mainstream media at that time and now it's become more capitalized to now where it's basically all Turking and booty shaking and what and money and you pop this ninja and like get that gun and like all this other bullshit and like and the stories that are not you might have a mainstream artist that might talk about those issues every now and again but they use that as an aesthetic for you know to sell albums so it doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot for them but for someone like this guy you know you can tell from him like you, and you showed me this a couple of weeks ago but you were kind of afraid of copyright so you didn't do it until yeah. now but you know these are the people that should be highlighted you know especially in the independent media space in terms of this is just art the true art that is not getting crossed over like Brandon Macklemore kind of did you know, but Macklemore is a known name. So he has an easier time to break through. Well, he broke through. So he would have an easier time to kind of do something a little more what may be considered controversial. But like this guy, you know, even our own Jesse Jett, shout out to our brother Jesse Jett, you know, like, and you guys know him, like he puts out albums like, TikToks like every other day, basically. Like yeah. the man is super talented, and yet, and I'll argue even in our space, he's not like elevated a lot to the point where you know he should have a larger following than he has. Now Jesse is going to be is humble about it, and he's and he will say to you, it's not about the fame, it's not about the money, it's about the art of it, and yeah. we really respect Jesse for that. But given the work, like, for hell, like, we're trying to raise money for him for a computer, you know? Like, his art should be more elevated, uh, definitely in independent media, you know, in terms of what he's trying to say, given the political poetry slash spoken word that he does, that really does resonate with our audience, for sure. And, like, shout out to Kit for Hanlon's Media for highlighting Jesse frequently shout out to Savvy who also had Jesse on uh, recently yeah. as well, you know, but stuff like this within this space, we're not just commentators, we're artists, we're workers, and like, all these stories should be elevated more. And that's why, essentially, why Indy wanted to create this network to reflect a lot of those voices in the space, you know, and I think generally we need to do a better job of that to kind of counter the uh, superficiality that we see in mainstream media when it comes to situations like this. Like in terms of, oh, I'm just doing this because I know it's just going to get me the clicks and the likes versus we're doing this because we have something to say that uh, around stuff that we care about and that actually does affect us because we're on the ground seeing it, if not experiencing it every single day. So... This is life for us. This is meaningful for us. And may not be so for these celebrities who might just look at it from a very privileged bubble. Yep. Makes a lot of sense to me. You know, it's I, I enjoy playing Jesse every start of the show. So <clears throat> force people to listen to some good artists. And feel free to send me more. I am more than willing to listen to actual good art. So you know. We'll take it, but as 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 we said earlier, real voices are demonetized and and demonized and pushed outside the norm. So, you know, you can go to code dot com slash indie news networks and get QR code on your screen, support us directly. You know, help keeps our lights on in this capitalist hellhole. So, 
you know, if you can't do that, though, because you're also one of us fours, you know, just liking and sharing, commenting, leaving a comment, all that stuff, sharing, all super important. We're almost 2K, so, you know, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. You know, otherwise, I believe someone for did during that segment. So thank you to whoever that was. Yeah, appreciate you. Uh... Thank you.